Gretel and Hansel was one of the films that came out to theaters while I was in the process of moving and had no access to a movie theater that was showing it. I wanted to see it really badly and it just didn't happen for me. I finally got a chance to check it out. Now this is from director Osgood Perkins or Oz Perkins, Anthony Perkins' son, and he previously had directed the films the Pre I Am the Pretty Thing That Lives in the House and The Amazing, Wonderful February, a.k.a. Black Coat's Daughter, which I actually didn't like on my first viewing and absolutely loved and adored on my second viewing. One of the most drastic um, turnarounds I think I've ever had, along with the movie Session 9. I guess these slower burn horror movies sometimes work for me. Um, on the first view, sometimes they don't work for me at all on the first view and then take that second view for me to, I don't know, understand what it was going for. I'm not really honestly sure what it is about those movies. And I actually just had this kind of happen with It Comes at Night, which I was not a fan of the first time. And I really enjoyed the second time when I watched it last night. So these slower burn art house movies can take multiple viewings for me to love. But this one is a slower art house, you know, horror flick as well. Now, this one's PG-13. Now, I will tell you that I didn't feel like this was held back by its PG-13 rating at all. Like, never during the film did I feel like, wow, I can tell this was toned down. Or I can tell this was you know, cut or anything like that. It never felt like it needed anything more than it did. This, of course, is about a unique version retelling of the Hansel and Gretel storyline about two young kids who are lost in the woods. They find a house with a bunch of food. They go inside, and we know what happens with the witch and whatnot. Um, now this stars Sophia Lillis from It Chapter One, and she's also in Chapter Two. You know, she plays Beverly, but she's the kid version, and she's been in a few other things as of recently, especially that Netflix series. Um, I'm not okay with this, I wanna say. Uh, now, this is very much a art house, slow burn, split kind of film. As soon as you watch it, you're like, oh shit, this is like a total A24 you know, split straight down the middle kind of film. It has a 5.4 on IMDb, which I can, hmm, does it deserve that? Absolutely not. Am I shocked by that after having seen the film? Shocked, I don't think would be the right word, but I am surprised that it is as low as it is because I personally loved this movie. Now, this will not be for everyone. In fact, I think that this will probably be on the wrong side of 50% disliking it or hating it. Um, but that's typical with art house slow burn films like this that are more artistic and you know don't have a very obvious narrative that people can follow and you know everything wraps up nicely and uh, you know is not filled with jump scares and silliness that a lot of you know, mainstream horror can be filled with. So now, what this film has in spades is atmosphere. That is really, it's, well, I'd say that its biggest strength for me was its cinematography and its score and its set design. Just aesthetics. Like, the aesthetics of the film are fabulous like this is something you want on blu-ray this is something you want in the highest definition possible to really soak in what the director was going for here and the cinematographer and everyone behind the camera that helped make this film look as good as it did the set designs you can tell that it's got a lower budget but that the budget is perfectly utilized that everything you know, all the budget is up on the screen. It is a gorgeous film. Now, Sophia Lillis is an actress that I really enjoy, and I love her in this. I love all of the actors in this. There's only, like, you know, three main actors in this, and then you get a couple other actors that are only there for, you know, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, whatever, and there's very, very few of them. It 
centers on these three characters, Hansel, Gretel, and of course the witch. I was just so immersed in the atmosphere and the cinematography and the aesthetics. Um, now, as far as the story goes, we know basically what the story is. So there's alterations on it for sure. There's additions to it for sure. And I liked all of those a whole hell of a lot. There isn't a ton substantively going on here. Um, but that doesn't really matter for me because what I'm here for in this film is to be sucked into its atmosphere, is to be completely immersed in the scenery, in the sets, in the music. The music is phenomenal. I loved the music in this film so, so much. It's As I said before, it's not surprising that it's hated. It's not surprising to me that I've talked to plenty of people who are bored, who have no interest in seeing it because of what they've heard, that they were underwhelmed. Um, the 5.4 does feel low to me because even films that are disliked at a 50% ratio in the horror community, like a you know typical A24 film, something like even It Comes at Night, which is hated by the people who don't like it, that thing still has like a six point something, like a 6.1, 6.2, somewhere in that area. And that feels more accurate. Like what I would put it at, I don't know. I don't know where I'd rate this to be honest, but like what I would like to see is this thing in the sevens. I think that's what it deserves. You know, Midsommar and Hereditary and films like that where now, I don't think it's as good as those, but it's damn close for me just because of its atmosphere and its aesthetics. Now, what it's lacking that those films have for me is depth to the characters and the story within it. Like Hereditary pretty much checks every box imaginable for me in horror or in film in general. Like it has everything I want in it. Um, this one, the story does lack but you know I don't I didn't really expect more from it than I got you know like with the story I know this very um the 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 kid's story as it is while dark is pretty simple so that's what I expected especially with three characters like this in a house and we kind of know where this is all heading and the tweaks that were put in here in the in the additions I just thought were great. So it, as I said like I don't feel like it needed to be that super deep story and exploration of of characters. You know, it for me this was always going to be about the aesthetics, the music, all of that stuff and it landed completely for me 100%. So I'm I got exactly what I wanted out of it, so I'm completely pleased. Now, people who are going to go in for other things and, you know, the uh, the stuff I already mentioned, and they don't like slow burn art house horror, yeah, they're not going to like this. It's just, you know, that's, that, that is what it is. Everyone's great here. Um, but, yeah, this is something I want to buy. This is something I want to watch, you know, on the biggest screen possible with the best version of it you know the 4k if they ever make it i don't know we'll see what happens when they release it on um you know uh disc like a 4k or blu-ray uh probably won't get a 4k which is a shame and uh but blu-ray will suffice and i i heavily look forward to watching this again and i hope that you know you guys give it a chance if you're if you're into um this style of filmmaking, I I really, really hope it lands for you, but I'm, I'm not going to be surprised with the comments and how much they hate it. <laughs> not at all. That's, that's to be expected with films like this. But at the end of the day, your opinion is all that matters. It really is. Like, anybody else can say whatever the fuck they want about a movie. The general consensus can be whatever it wants. The thing can be rated a fucking 1.0 on IMDb. But if you watch it and you love it, then it's a great movie, like period. So it's, it's always odd 
to discuss film with people and their opinions towards it and be like, oh, this is a terrible movie. And it's like, yeah, for you. But for me, I thought this was fantastic. So, yeah, I'll be curious. We'll see. So, see you in the comments. Adios.